This is Bridget Ra with Divine Essentials. Hello, this is the Starseed Shaman Podcast. This is my third attempt at doing this. I do have a microphone. I did test it a couple of times, so I believe it's working. Um, the first t- two attempts, I got to be like 20-something minutes within the recording, and then something would happen or... Um, I don't know, just like fell off of where I wanted to be with it. Um, so I took a break and was like, okay, recoup and come back because that's just how things have been with the energies anyways. We have a lot of stuff that, that happens. So um, right now we're in the height of the Pleiadian lineup and depending on you, depending on who you are, where you are, and what type of soul you carry, um, it's probably going to impact some of us more than others. I've always been somebody that gets hit really like more intensely in the November Pleiadian lineup than with the May, which is interesting because I'm born in May on the um, height of the lineup. And it was one of those final factors for me back when I had first awoken and went through every piece of, you know, information I could study, find and look into, um, trying to basically figure out what the hell was wrong with me and I was like am I crazy is this really real um because of the way that I stumbled onto stuff even from the get-go it's like I wasn't a spiritual person I wasn't a religious person my family's not the guy that I was living with was definitely not yet you know a buzz goes through my head and then I'm talking about meteors and stars and planets and stuff and then as soon as I'm done finishing up the, you know, saying this big spiel to something to my mom about all of these things that I'm thinking about the stars and all of that, she flicks the channel onto the Discovery channel and they recite back everything I had just said about meteors and stars and, and all of that. So I was like, what the hell? And I remember I walked over to like the couch area that she was at and I typed something in. I was going to show her something on YouTube. And for some reason, when whatever, I don't even know what it was, but I remember uh, beside her, like beside the um, the little video that I showed her, they have the um, things that are like, hey, look at this, you know, like a recommended list. And on the top of the recommended list was this green headed person or just a green head with smoke coming out of the ears. And it was like 12 signs of a spiritual awakening. Because I was freaking out at that point, too. And I was like, what the hell's going on with me? Like, she saw it. She was well aware that something weird was happening. Um, and when I clicked on that video, every single one of those 12 signs was like, yep, 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 yep. And that kind of sparked off, you know, a long-ass time of me diving deeper and deeper and deeper into more information that was out there. So... You know, it wasn't very long before I was, like, hitting these, like, starseed videos. Like, you know, signs of a starseed. And then, you know, signs of a Pleiadian starseed. And da-da-da-da-da. And it's kind of interesting when I think think back even because the way that the world is and the way that we are with algorithms and stuff like that, like, the the likelihood and the, like, the randomness of it all was kind of just, like, it was totally, in you know, intervention on a higher level like they took over they they were the ones putting information in my brain and you know making the tv come out with those things at the exact same time like i mean word for word we were both like what the hell is going on um and then you know all these other things because back then there wasn't this massive amount of people out there just you know regurgitating the same old shit that other people have already done or people you know basically see, oh yeah, Pleiadian, blah, 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 25 characteristics of a Pleiadian starseed, and then, you know, there's like 10,000 of those videos now, but back then, there was like two, and of the two, neither one of them were person talking, you just had to read the words on the screen, uh, sometimes you had to slow them down to get to be able to see what it said, and sometimes you wanted to speed it up because it was going so freaking archaic slow across the screen, and, uh, it was a it was a difficult time to find information, but I did find it a lot of it, no matter how I seeked into Google 
or into YouTube, I would always come back with something that was like, oh, wow, that's weird. That's weird synchronicity. And I feel like it hasn't stopped since. It happens to different various degrees, depending on where we are on our path and probably um, how aligned we are with things and, you know, them trying to give us hints or give us that like green light or the um, thumbs up as in, hey, yeah, keep going, do that thing. Yep, up, up, up. And when I ask, that also helps significantly, which I never knew in the beginning about, you know, free will, things, playing parts of stuff and having to ask for assistance and support in order for them to be able to do it. Um, But I also know that we make agreements on an I am present. So sometimes they will show up in your life and assist you or something will happen. A big shift will change. You have some crazy thing go down And it's not that you didn't give them permission or whatever. It's just a predetermined experience. The the I am presence has already, you know, established that this is going to happen on this day. And you're going to be a part of this situation that's going down on this point. And when we think about Pleiadian lineup, that's basically what this time is all usually about. Uh, Lavendar from StarseedHotline.net is the person that discovered these Starseed markings, okay? She's the one that talks about the Pleiadian lineup. And it had been about a year into me discovering what I was discovering and pointing together all the things that I had been doing and, and, you know, coming up with my own, like, explanation for me and what I was feeling and what I thought was going on based off of, you know, taking the information that was available and trying to come up with some sort of idea. And um, when I found her stuff, it was like the icing on the cake because... I believe that each and every single one of us comes in here and we have a, you know, blueprint or a marking type of system or some sort of way that we have encoded ourselves so that we can experience certain things, but also remember certain things or trigger certain things at certain times and ensure that, you know, we can awaken or remember or basically, you know, just trigger certain stuff through whatever means we chose. Now, some of us, like myself, who woke up 11 years ago and had no other people who were near me to communicate with or distract me about stuff or get off the path into a weird, you know, other places that I think can happen now to people, I went diving deep into information. And it was like, I would take almost like cycles or something where I would be diving into Atlantis and all the Atlantis stuff and Plato and people who are like out there looking for Bimini Road and um, Bimini, Florida and how is this connected and blah, 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 and over in Greece and this island and the Santorini Island and, blah, 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 and Bethany Hughes and this person and that person and like all these things, all these documentaries, all these um, people who have been, you know, su- searching and studying and doing it and like, yeah, well, oh my god, these rocks right here, Plato said they had red and blah, 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 and, and these rocks right here match that. And look at there's a freaking, there's a bull and they did the bull worshipping here and they killed the bull and the bull and the bull, because the bull is the constellation for Tor- Taurus, which the Taurus is the constellation where the Pleiades are in the eye of Taurus is where you'll find the Pleiades, which is a very small little tiny it's like the it's like the little tiny dipper but um it's it's up there in the eye of the big v which is taurus and if you look over to the left you're going to see the three stars that is orion's belt he's like trying to get them okay so they always say orion is chasing after the seven sisters in the native americans they say that the big bear is chasing the daughters of the chief um and there's all these different ways of looking at it and then you can tie in orion with Osiris from Egypt, which then brings in Sirius, who's Isis. But then later on, we found out that there's two Sirius stars, Sirius A, Sirius B. They're on elliptical orbit. They make the pattern of DNA as they go through their time span. And the Dogon tribe in Africa knew this. They knew about them. And they were like, oh, yeah, the, the Nomos told us about it. Who the fuck are the, the fish people told these African people about Sirius A and Sirius B and elliptical patterns and all the shit that they could do and ba 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 ba. Way, 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 way before we even had the technology to see that, okay? Then we see things like Zechariah Stitchin. He has the, the cylinder seals that he got from, um, you know, 
the the information about Enki and Enlil and Sumeria and all of that stuff over there. And when you look at the information that he did with the cuneiform, because it's a, it, like it's hard to d- decode cuneiform. It's not like a normal everyday language that many people know. It's kind of like the hieroglyphs. It's kind of up for interpretation. But when he did it, you can see very clearly that there is like a twelfth planet which is not part of our solar system, and you can see very clearly that they're depicting and talking about how when they came here, they were coming here from outside of this solar system. And first of all, way back then, how would they even know that there's something beyond what they could see, the sun, moon, and the earth, right? They're on the earth, they could see the sun, they could see the moon, but they knew about freaking 12 planets, and they would depict their information as in if they were way out, coming to us, you know how we're the third rock from the sun? They did that opposite with their information for this stuff, which is like, you know, the proof that they were way, way out, came on in. And that backs up that information about Nibiru, the 12th planet, and all of that. So these are the things that I studied. I like looked into, I did the deep dive, went into ancient artifacts and suppressed artifacts. Because if you go and you become, you know, and a person and you go pay all this money for schooling and then you go out there and you find something that goes against the mainstream media and it's like boom oh yeah ba 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 you have a choice as that person now you can throw out all the money you spent on your school and you can basically kiss your career goodbye your 401k and all of that and become a mock uh, um laughing stock of all of the people that you know or you can, you know, suppress that thing and not tell everybody because they don't want to change the history books. They don't want to tell the masses about these things that are not fitting in with, you know, the evolution theory or within Darwin's thing. Because that's just, it's, it's just easier for them to not do that. They put it off. They don't want you. They're not looking to, to educate and make people smarter and w- wiser and all of that. They just... A lot of people who are in control of all of that stuff or at the top of all of that are just very self-serving and I don't think they've had any experiences to help them to get to a point of having compassion or empathy or caring, you know, about the planet or anybody else other than themselves. So, again, when you come in, whether you come in during a Pleiadian lineup or Syrian lineup or ba-ba-ba, whatever... I do feel that you will be coding yourself and your name is going to hold frequency and energy. Your birthday is going to hold energy and frequency. Um, The family members that you come into, the dynamics around your family members, where you choose to live here, where you choose to move around here, who you interact with as friends and who you interact with as lovers. And all of that stuff is going to play a part into the grand, you know, symphony of your life. Sometimes you're going to be on point. You're going to go right down that path that you had you know, intended for yourself, and other times you're probably going to stray off and get a little lost and all of that. So when we have the Pleiadian lineups, they can be looked at in a couple of different ways. Like first off, Lavendar, everywhere she went for a while, she was finding people who were coming back with their birthdays having these markings. And if you look at the, the zodiac wheel, it's a 360 degree wheel with 12 different zodiac signs. There's actually 13 if you add in the Ophincus, which is the serpent, which is hidden and suppressed, just like all the other 13s across the freaking world. Divine feminine number, sacred number, Kundalini energy, serpent energy. They suppress it because they don't want you to access it because it's, it's you know, transformative. It's mind, you know, expansive. It's going to wake you up. It's going to break through all the bullshit that has been, like, keeping you limited. But anyways... We have, you know, Taurus, right? Taurus has its little place on the map. And then we have, across from there, uh, Scorpio. And that has its little place on the map. So 25, 26, 27, 28 degrees can be found in those areas on both of those sides. And the people who are born around those days of like the 15th to the 20th will usually line up with those 25, 28 degree markings. Now, think about how vast that thing is, right? There's all these other signs. There's all these other degrees. Everywhere this woman went for a while, that's only people that she was meeting. She went and up in a restaurant, and everybody in the restaurant that would give her that information of their birthday came back with the Palladian markings. she get on a plane, same thing. It kept happening, kept happening, kept happening, all the way till she went to Cairo, 
and went into the Great Pyramid and did a activation night with people there. She had a person in a sarcophagus doing like light codes and activations and ba 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 crystals and energies and sound healing and all of that the resonance within there it was like a very powerful thing and it was during the lineup and um there was a man who went into it she's working on him during this energy transmission and all of that and he dies he's not breathing he's not moving oh my god they start freaking out and then i'm like out of nowhere <gasps> he's back but he's not back a new him is here a walk-in him is here so that's the walk-in soul coming in to put him back on target with his path. Prior to him getting into that sarcophagus and taking his turn within there, he had been flirting with one of the other people that was at this event. He had, um, you know, a whole life at home with a job and children and people in his world that he dealt with. When he came out of that sarcophagus, he acted like he didn't even know the person he had previously been, you know, flirting with and all of that. Went home, changed his career completely, and just went onto the path in a new way and in a whole new energy and frequency so you'll see that happen during these times they say that this is when they do their special missions or projects or weird you know things that are like covertly happening and it's because of the alignment so if i go outside right now and i look up Pleiades is gonna be right there boom i can see it it's, it's easily accessible you're gonna you know it, it's and it's a more direct line to here so this happens in May and November, and we have these other alignments that happen around this time in November, like the 11-11 portal, and there's usually like the eclipse season going on. We have the veil that becomes very, very thin for Samhain on October 30th. So it's just a very more heightened season, I feel, for things that transpire. I awoke in November of 2011, right before the, the 2012 souls woke up. And if you look back and you see the channelings and things like that from people like Lavendar, people who were back then channeling these things in preparation for the, the others who were going to come now to channel, um, they were even saying like there was like so many souls set to come in as walk-in souls. Some souls, like there was there's these big times like during these lineups from the 15th to the 20th, May and November, where massive amounts of souls will come in and go out they drop bodies and shit like they just like you just find a dead body in the woods it's not even really a dead body it's just that they the soul exited it left and and chose to just drop the body and let somebody discover it and whatever because they didn't have a walk in to come in to replace the person so that person's done with its mission here they they just took off they they boop out of here others that fall too far from the path and aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing haven't you know, thing set up with the iron presence, like, hey, asshole, if you get too far off the path, we're going to come in, and you're leaving, and they're coming in to take over and get you back to where you need to be, and that's why you'll hear these stories of, like, amnesia, or people who have, you know, near-death experiences, they wake up, they're totally different, they go through a divorce, they quit their jobs, they do something totally different than what they had been, or who they had been, becomes, like, you know, a distant memory. I also believe <coughs> that we do this <clears throat> to various degrees so like when I woke up in November I feel like what that was that big buzz that went through my head that brought in all that information and like the the ability to be like wait wait a minute there's a whole other world or there's information that I don't know about or that I do know about that I need to go confirm now because that's kind of what happened it was like all this information was up there but I was like why, why am I why do I know this like how do I know this and where did this come from and then I would go do the deep dive into exploring, you know, uh, mythology, Jesus and Mary and uh, the bloodlines and the Holy Grail. And then I'd get into like the, the ancient Rome and, um, you know, go into things just all over the place and all the different ways that it's been, you know, expressed and, and it was like, I was not looking up just like run of the mill, like weirdo people doing whatever. I was looking up actual like documentaries with people with PhDs and actual like wisdom and logical things that they're applying to why they're doing stuff and following the calling of the earth, you know, in the way that it's set up and the magnetics and the da -ba -ba, da -boo -boo -boo. so that's why. I think I got to be able to finally get to a point where it's like, okay, I can't deny this. Like, like literally, there's a lot of shit suppressed here. Literally, we have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff on this planet alone right now in this moment that is unexplainable. But they, like, just shush it away. 
there's freaking entire cities under the water right now that nobody ever talks about. Megaliths, huge places that could easily be Atlantis. I feel that Atlantis was like a worldwide thing. It wasn't just in Bimini. It wasn't just over there. It was everywhere. But when things change on a huge scale, like when we have the tectonic plates moving, you know, mountains are formed and caverns are created and things shift and change and flow. And so what was once here will change completely and look totally different. But I also believe that who was once here can return here through us in various ways. So when I incarnated and I chose the name Bridget and I chose the May 18th to be the day and I chose my mom and I chose my dad and I chose the bloodline that I came in on and I chose the time and the, and the date and all of that for a reason because it was going to fire me up and it was going to be the markers that I would need specifically to help me to become okay like this is this is it this is this is where I need to go and I've done the deep dive enough for me to be like convinced that there is a bigger thing than me out there orchestrating and assisting and putting all of this together with us um and i can't deny it anymore it's just become like like so fucking blatantly obvious to me that when i find people who are like oh, bah, bah, or they don't believe that there could possibly be another freaking form of life out there I'm like, what is wrong? how how can you be that like that ignorant to think that that's that this is it that we of the in, infinite vastness of all that just never ends never ever 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 ends yet this never ending vast expansive thing that's billions and billions of light years that's bigger than we can even fathom or understand but there's nobody else out there of course not why would there be what the hell like how does that even how does it no but that shows you how like how ingrained or how easily manipulated people have become or how like indoctrinated this information that keeps them stuck or stunted is and they don't want to question they don't want to ask the questions they don't want to believe in these other things that aren't mainstream beliefs or mainstream ideas because they don't want to be made fun of or looked at like they're weirdos because everybody's so worried about what everybody else thinks and that's another reason why they cause all the separation, the segregation, and putting us against each other. Because it keeps us from banding together and figuring shit out. The internet has helped a lot to be able to be like, wow, wow, oh, wow, look at what they found. And look at what they did. And look at what they have. You know? And, and of course, there's always going to be people who won't believe or can't believe or never going to be able to, like, perceive it. Fine, whatever. But we need to, you know... We need to keep putting ourselves out there and we need to keep showing these things and going within ourselves to explore because the answers really aren't outside of us externally. They're within us. They're encoded in who we are and how we are, what we do, when we do it, and all of that. So there's all these synchronicities for myself that are significant for me that make me know where I need to go and what's going to be the right thing or not the wrong thing and my guides show me very clearly when something's right and when something's wrong and it comes in in various degrees so you know the number patterns and things like that that's coming in that's giving you energy frequency information and downloads if you keep seeing seven 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 one seven seven zero seven seven blah, 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 you're probably receiving something in alignment with those energies some sort of message it could shift next week and now you're going to start getting the eights or the twos or the whatevers there may be one or a couple of them that are significant for you specifically that follow you around and sometimes they can be connected to a twin flame or a soulmate somebody that is significant in your life and you have some sort of thing to do with them so you're going to be reminded of them over and over and over and over and over until you complete whatever it is that you need to complete or figure out whatever it is you need to figure out to finish up that thing so you can get to the next number or to the next part of the journey but it's all encoded within us in our DNA in our cellular memories in our bloodlines and in our consciousness and I feel like you know how so many people are like I am Mother Mary like incarnated again or I'm Jesus reincarnated or I'm this reincarnated people resonate very strongly with one goddess over another or with one religion over another or the one person out there deity whatever some people are all about Kali some people are all about Bridget some people are all about you know like Hecate but I feel like what that is is 
you may have chosen to incarnate with a part of them within you, like a soul aspect or a fragment of the soul that they would have had or a lesson that they went through that you're going to embody and go through in your experience here so that you can ascend and learn and heal and grow. So many of these ascended masters, these people like Jesus and Mary and Kuan Yin and all of that, basically what that implies is they're ascended masters. That So they came in here and they went through the ascension process. They retrieved the parts of themselves that, that had been lost at different points. They healed themselves to a whole enough point that they no longer had to come back here. They transcended this place and they are now above within the ethers and the energies and the frequencies they're infinite and they're expansive and they're all around and yes we all are one and one is all and we share this oneness connection but as a creator we choose to create what we are going to create in every moment and i think that before we come into an incarnation we consciously choose what things we want to incorporate into that creation and then it unfolds as it's supposed to or naturally or you will just kind of go through the things as the result of holding that frequency and vibration so say you come in and you're like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna bring in some of that isis and osiris stuff which is basically mary and jesus stuff which is basically all of the religions across the world stuff so it kind of backs up what i'm saying all of these people who've had these experiences that are very similar whether it's on a grand scale that everybody knows about and written in the Bible, or it's on a little scale that you and some dude had this experience that was kind of weird, and blah, blah, blah. It, and it may not be all of it. It may just be parts of it that really strongly resonate with you. Those are the things that you chose to learn and heal and grow through. But those are the indicators for you of like figuring out what you need to do and where you need to go and what needs to release and where, where you head next and all of those things that you intertwine together. You also want to re really, really, really remember to go within yourself for the information that's inside of you rather than the external. Because, you know, I spent tons of time looking in the external. I spent tons of time and I found stuff every time I looked because we will do that. It's just like with the atoms that are split, right? There's a quantum entanglement where basically there's an atom. And if you take that atom and you cut it in half... That, that's a quantum entanglement of two pieces of one thing, okay? They, they still work together, even though they're not together. One of them is going to go up in direction, and one of them is going to go down in direction instantaneously. As soon as you let them go, they're, they're going to start going in their directions. But you could take your half, you know, 10 million light years away and, you know, put the other one 10 million light years in the other direction. And if you flick one of them, the other one is going to react at the exact same moment, at the exact same time. No matter where it is in space and time, it's going to impact each other because they have that entanglement with each other. And it shows, you know, how that stuff influences things. There's also, like, this concept of, like, uh, everything being a projection. I've been saying this to my dad recently because he's like, bah, 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 bah. you know, sometimes he gets upset about... Um, like what the hell's the point and what are we doing and blah 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 and why blah blah how can we fix it and you know just stuff like that because the world's fucked up and I, I keep trying to tell him lately like like it's a projection so if you're focused on the fear if you're focused on the bad you're focused on the shit that you don't want which is hard to not focus on because it's like that's what we have jammed into our faces it's very easy to decline and to slide down into the darkness and the despair and the hate and the misery and oh my god because you know that's where a lot of people want you to be because anybody who's in that place usually is projecting it out onto others so that they don't have to be there by themselves and anybody out there in the world that's like you know a little manipulative or controlling doesn't like to see other people shine or happy or whatever they might get jealous or triggered or resentful they're you know sending their shit at you their hate their their energies and their daggers and their wishes for you to fail and if you fall into the fucking darkness and you fall down into the depths of that place you know, it's it's what you're projecting out into this creation. So you're going to see it. You're going to project it. You're going to create it. But it's an illusion, too. It's very much real for you while you're here. You are a solid being. You know, you have this solid vessel that you're using while you're here. But you are beyond that, too. You are not just your body. You are not just your thoughts. You're not just anything. You are infinite and expansive. But they're even, you know, having like these things come up now where, where science is backing up these, these concepts and these ideas that we've been talking about in the spiritual community f that I've been within for 11 years now. Um, but the projection thing is, is like, you know, like the, F uh, I don't even know, I think the, like, um, 
one of those CIA or whatever was saying, like, like he, our world is basically a holographic projection, and you can astral project. Astral projection is real. So when you astral project and you're in control of your dream, that's what this life is. You want to think of this as a dream. Before you came to this dream, you chose your name. You chose your parents. You chose the date of birth. You chose how you were going to come in, how you were going to be, what you were going to do, and where you were going to go, and all of that. Then you came in through that veil of like, burp, burp, and got cut off, and you've been trying to make your way back to remember. You'd be trying to awaken and shift the collective so that everybody can make their way back and remember. Because it is like the Matrix, and it, and, and it is so much easier, and we can overcome anything. We can heal anything, we can overcome anything. It's like, you know, you see these stories about miracles or things that have just been like mind-boggling or crazy or wow, that's wow, how did they do that? It's it's because they didn't allow their themselves to get sucked into the lie or the illusion or they didn't allow themselves to keep one belief that they just, you know, allowed to harm them or hinder their growth while here and then as we ascend and as we grow and as we raise the frequencies and vibrations of this place the souls that come in now are coming in even higher and higher in energy and frequency they're pre-activated they're you know and again predetermined they're going to come in and they may come in as like um somebody has labeled with autism or somebody that seems like you know there's an issue or something's wrong but really what it is is they're not plugged into the matrix on a level like us we're we're so egotistical and worried about how we look and you know do we have the best this and how, what people are going to think and what are people going to say money 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 which money is a whole freaking stupid system they stopped backing the money up with gold long ago so now they just print paper and are like, here's some paper, enjoy it, and then your money that you've been saving and working hard for has not, has, doesn't have the same value that it used to have. And they're just lying to people or, you know, messing with people, keeping them in these cycles or these experiences, like, they can never get out of. You're never going to be able to own anything with taxes and all of that. You're never going to be able to, like, pay off certain de debts or loans if you you know, go with the terms that some of the places out there, you know, offer. Like, yeah, we'll give you $15,000, but by the time you pay it back, you've paid $300,000. Like, that's insanity. Why would anybody do that? But they do when they're desperate, or they do when they don't know, and then they get sucked into these things, and bad stuff happens. But it's, it's all part of the projection. It's all part of the matrix. It's all part of the bullshit reality that none of us really have to be a part of. You know, like you get to choose how, how you want to show up in the world, where you want to give your energy and attention, who you're going to give your energy and attention to. And that's like when we go through the traumas and we go through the pains, we go through the experiences that are difficult, it's going to impact us. It can impact us physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. If you allow it to eat away at you or you don't process it or you don't listen to the call from within, you don't go voice the stuff inside of you that needs to be voiced or you don't let it out or heal it or transfer it or transmute and retrieve the pieces of you that have been lost along the way it, you're probably going to get sicker and sicker and sicker and further and further and further and lower and lower and lower in your vibrations and energies and experiences but if you can take back your power and remember that you are the creator that you are in control of everything and that you don't need anybody outside of you to do what anybody else has done because it's basically you know we're all we all have the same prerequisites and we all have the same abilities and the same stuff some people just know how to use them before you do some people have been here longer or some people have awoken sooner or some people are more apt to be logical in their approach to something that you may be more creative in something but that's like why we need to get back into collaborating instead of having all this fucking competition and weirdness between people like people get mad at you if you're doing good people don't like to see other people shine or do well unless the other people are healthy and doing well themselves you know it depends on who you're dealing with and it's, even in that case sometimes people don't want you to see you do well because they may have felt superior to you or they may have been using like what they had to to be like better than you 
or to manipulate you in some way or to try to control you you know there's always strings attached with things with certain people there's always um you know these energetic shit shows that happen along our dynamics and our relationships and the connections that we have with others it's like people are, are pushed and pushed and pushed to try harder and do better and do better and become you know something and do hard work and da, da, da. but then when you do and you bust your ass you get like you know p- picked apart for oh you don't spend any time with your friends and you <coughs> or you changed you've changed of course it fucking changed it's been healing that was the point of doing anything is to heal and to change and to become a better version and if you don't like the better version then that's just because i'm no longer reflecting the broken you know self of my like that you were resonating with so you're not healing you're not resonating you're not changing and that's you'll find that a lot with people in your family and your friends when you wake up you lose people they just kind of disappear they like come and go in and out depends on the energy and the frequency that you're on a lot of times you're going to be alone a lot of times there's not going to be anybody else out there that has a fucking clue as to exactly what you're going through or when you know you go through it they may they may come around like years later and you're like oh my god i remember that but it's it can be a very lonely journey and it can be a very difficult place it can be uh, daunting and, and you know painful but it is also rewarding and it is also worth it to not to not just like throw in the towel just because you know and realize like a lot of the beliefs that we have have been made that way to keep us stuck like sometimes people will be like oh but it's your family man it's your family you can't back out of your family well what if your fucking person in your family is like a murderer or what if they're like a rapist or what if they've destroyed everything that you've ever had because the family and you didn't let them not like be around because the family at some point you would have to make the decision to be like, all right, I gotta, I gotta choose me over you, because you're killing me, and I can't, I can't do that. You know, I want to choose, I want to choose myself. Yes, you're my family, but that doesn't mean that I have to be like indebted to you forever, and let you get away with being a horrible family member. You know, like tell, how can we don't say that to those ones who are being the assholes that we want to like get away from? Like, hey. You're my family. You're supposed to not be an asshole. Stop being that way. But we don't. We we always seem to go towards the others that are, like, trying to better themselves and, and make them feel guilty for that, for, like, abandoning, you know, people that should probably be abandoned to get them to wake up and change, you know. But your belief system is the biggest thing that you got in this world. And right now you may find that there's going to be some tests you may find that there's some triggers you may find that there's like an accelerated rate the last time we were in the energies that we are currently in right now like astrologically speaking are from 2012 to 2014 what was going on then for you in 2012 to 2014 because you may go through another round of that which i thought was funny because I was awakening. I was doing the deep dive and exploring into, you know, what is a star seed and where do I come from and what is this and what is that? And I looked into so many weird, random things. I actually found a notebook. Um, I actually found a couple notebooks, but I, I brought one up last night and I was looking at some of my old art in there and some of the old notes that I was making in there. And these are all from 2012 which was synchronistic in itself because I heard the other day about that. Yeah, we're back. We're going back into the cycle that we had in 2012 to 2014. People are going to be like kind of doing the same thing or maybe going deeper or, you know, finishing up whatever lesson they started at that time. <clears throat> and it's funny because even then, in 2012, like I woke up right in November of, of 2011. So it was basically 2012. Those first two years, I was by myself. It wasn't until 2015 that I, I even met other people from my spiritual community in my area went and got certificates and stuff like that but I had already been you know a weirdo like locked away not talking to anybody knowing about this stuff being outside at night with the stars talking to the stars I got a um, a, what do you call it so that I could get like a closer view I had actually two telescopes at one point but There's going to be, like, you know, uh, I can't remember what I was saying now. I got lost. The hell was I saying? Anyways, oh, yeah, I had the notes. And the notes are, like, tied back to each other. It's weird. It's like it's like they they fit together in some way. Um, things that are very still, still much relevant now as they were then. 
you know, I'm being finding them. Uh, but I did do some channeling and I did make some notes here. And every year is a little different, you know. So, like, the big themes, the overall big themes of the, the lineup is like, yep, this is a time where they do their, their special projects and their special missions. Sometimes there's grand, like, things that happen where there's like 300 souls are going to come walk in or 300 souls are going to go walk out and it's predestined pre-planned like a big ass ship comes in and i definitely know that ships have been coming in massive amounts of them i don't know exactly what the plan is with them at the moment but i've definitely seen them i definitely know that like there's also um like coding that's coming in and it may come in in different ways for everybody it could be like the, like the, the numbers are coding you it could be ringing in your ears it could be you know just feeling called to certain frequencies or colors sounds music humming listening to meditations you know just follow your inner knowing and try to stay away from anybody or anything that takes you down and away from the high vibrations um it's funny, it says, Pleiadian lineup has been sending in high vibrations and frequency, love and light alignments coming down from Elcyon, the great central sun. You simply open your third eye to allow and shift your awareness of perspectives within and extend 3D and 5D, the light bodies, the auras being cleansed and moving outward, clear, bright, balanced, beautiful, surrounded in divine light. Breathe down and in the silvers and golds and copper frequencies into your body, mind, and soul. We are here. We are the Pleiadian Emissaries of Light. And we are excited to connect with each and every one of you. No matter when you find the transmission, it will be the exact moment that you are destined and designed to do so. We have told you before, through other methods, through other channels, and within your own souls and knowings, and again now, that all of this life, this being, your experience upon the earth, is to be felt, to feel the love, and feel the light, to feel the pains, the moments, of each experience that you've had, and will have. Many of you have been coming back to yourself for a long time, and some have awakened long ago, and you've explored daily, while others explore daily in order to awaken. And no matter who or where you find yourself at this moment, know that all is well. All of you here now is sacred, human, and all you have chosen to do and to come, to be, will be. And all of you will reach exactly where you chose to go on your incarnation. It may be a slow long ago or one of accelerated rates. And some of you have been breaking down the limits around you and you are hearing and seeing and feeling and knowing more than ever before. Connect through your hearts, dear ones. Stop allowing for the old pains to recycle up. Be ready to see in new ways. Be ready to discover all new sights and emotions. And talk to yourself. Talk to your soul. Your spirit. And listen. Pay attention. But please, don't limit the view in your grasp that is available now. The earth is moving to the core and it is shifting. The dimensions are shifting. There's death and rebirths. Mm -hmm. Unconditional love and truth is available. It is time to experience love in its potent powers from inside. Thinking about your heart's desires. What do you want? Who are you longing to be? And where do you want to go? With who? And when do you want to arrive? And what do you feel as you imagine yourself having those heart desires? 
close your eyes with your hands on your heart and breathe in through the nose three two one and exhale slowly through the mouth three two one and if you like to hum as you inhale three two one and exhale Ooh. and allow three two one breathe and be at peace be neutral and open receptive and allow the rays of light to come to you now they come from the star of the central sun and they come to the third eye oh. it is in the mind's eye it sees the desires in the moment breathe and trust we have been with you all along but many of you forget to communicate with us However, we do speak to you with the numbers, the Animal Kingdom messages, through the cards that you see on your social media feeds, the ones that you pull for yourself, and the love that you feel in those moments when you silence all chatter or distractions. You do have soul family with you too, and you recognize these souls in the images and in the names in the words that they type, in the comments, in the posts. So allow those souls who you recognize to deliver and to trust their words and their feelings, to invoke your connections on deeper levels, the memories of times long ago. You feel a resonance with these people that you've never met, and in some cases stronger than those that you have known and met. These are truly your brothers and sisters. These are truly your friends, your supporters. These are truly connections on soul levels. Go outside and go to the sky and go to the earth. Connect and create a fire or create a space to become open to all of the magic and manifest with your intention and your love. Stop waiting. Look above and allow from within. Be the you you are feeling calling you. Trusting. And trust love. Trust your soul. Trust those who feel like home. Love is here. And love is amazing. But be sure to love you before you empty it all out on those who cannot return all that you give. Some of us are going to say goodbye to the old ways of life, and some are learning very difficult lessons. Some will finally find the way. They will finally allow love to come and stay, but some need to stay strong, and some have to admit that at this time or another they have been wrong. They need to shift out of the dark and shift out of the night and allow a new outcome and allow in the light. Love is always good and love is always right. However, people you do love may not ever give back and that's all right. This is when you must choose to deliver love and go. Remove these people who can't give it back to you. And once you decide to say goodbye to the souls who harm you, through doing too much or nothing at all, you don't need to give to anyone, but those you do should also give and return to you. And if they don't, and when they only harm, you need to release, and it's time to move on. The space is needed, so those who will fill you up can come in and take over for those who need to be forgotten you have tried 
and you have cried. You have even given, and you have hurt, and have ha energetically died. Consciousness is rising and awakening in the souls, and you are already a pure divine soul. You are the one. You hold the key. And you need to do a new set of things. You need to slam that door and lock it tight, and rise, and stop giving out the keys to any that has told you lies. Those who do you harm, it only seems to keep being wrong. They keep on returning, and they cause alarms. It's time to let it go and move on. Stop wasting your time. Now is your turn. A powerful life, a beautiful wife, an incredible time. Never stop believing. It's always the time to rise. In some are healing, and some are growing, and some are confirming all of the deep knowings. And if you love someone, and if you love self, you will have to choose to place you first. And when you do, and when you let go, and when you transmute, you will enter a new world. That phoenix will rise, and you are about to see. You will never be hurt again. Not like the past with all of them and they and you have wished and you have cried and you have hoped and you have denied and you know it is useless to bother any more so let it go and allow yourself to soar some of the things that you may experience are deja vu and visions of beings the deja vu and the visions you see, the shadows out of the corners of your eyes, they come because you are rising. You are shifting out of the places you've been. You are seeing from a new perspective. The butterfly effect, it's changing. It's immediately jumping timelines. And it can make you wonder, and it can make you shift, and it can make you feel a bit upset. Things and people and animals and objects may seem to disappear or appear out of nothing. The matrix glitching and unplugging and allowing. The 11-11 synchronicity, awareness and divine codes and the clocks and the numbers and the 777s. Seven, seven, the twin flames and the soulmates and the shifting and awakening. Remember, these different realities are all happening now, infinitely expanding and spinning out there now. Changing your vibration, changing to the new earth. Why now? Because it's a cyclical energy, and it's a cyclic earth. Because we are a risk to life, and we want to evolve and heal the past. And as we evolve and as we grow, so too will those who are from the future versions of us. Activating the souls and seeing past the limitations, moving beyond this little nation. It is time to rise, it is time to heal, and it is time to manifest the world to heal. You are a divine soul and you can create, you can manifest. You can write and create through the affirmations, gratitude, the words that you speak and think, the things that you say and do. You are dreaming into being. You must trust in you. Dreaming into being, your own potion. Dreaming into being, and releasing the devotions. We are at an opportunity now to be in our power, focused on positive thoughts and feeling powerful with emotions, utilizing good feelings and moments of rest, bliss, joy, and calmness filled with gratitude. 
will be your ticket to amplify and magnify abundance and good things into your life. Allow these energies to come with certain aspects that will help you with the perfect time to finish what was started. You may not know or realize, but often things we forgot or put off, procrastinated, come back up at the right divine times. So do not stress, do not worry, do not try to think of everything in a hurry. Allow it to come when it's meant to be. Allow your lessons to flow, flow in and out endlessly. Embrace 13. Embrace the cycles. Allow yourself to rise to new heights. Acknowledge the difficulties that you have overcome. Acknowledge the light that you have within. The information that it holds and how you can be whole. The stories, the challenges, the debates, and the fights. They come and they go day and night. Everything is a simple thing, but just complex as it seems. Woke or in your dreams, duality. It will all be. Third dimensional is very transactional, and it is limited by the mind. But reality isn't that finite. Many focus on oneself and ego portraying fun. When they are actually sad, or always feel bad. <clears throat> Many within are incredibly mad, hanging on to anger and things that they've never expressed because of what it brings. But if we instead allow thoughts in the head to come out and say all that we may not fully understand or truly comprehend, perhaps we would see many are like we. They too are upset and unsure of what's next, and they don't like what's occurring, and they're often harboring their own pain in their own ways. But it's time to stop tearing up each other and instead work together. Create a new experience for all the beings on and off, within and out of the earth. Alone or together with those of your soul, alone or together with your divine counterparts, the masculines, the feminines, in harmony. Some of you will, and some of you won't. But it's okay, either way. Embrace what you need today. The main thing that you need to do, the number one issue that most seem to have, with the limits in the life and around all things, is because of the belief systems so whatever you believe deep down within equals all the outcomes that you dwell within. We wish that you could understand as easy as it is to become the creators that you perceive as God or some other sacred master. You are a master and you are divine. You are a soul who's so amazing that you can do anything that you like. But you must believe it. You must see it. Know that you are shifting your awareness and perspectives, and you are external. 3Ds and 5Ds are changing. The light bodies, the auras, are moving outward and cleansing and becoming brighter and more beautiful. And all of these frequencies are shifting and aligning, healing the collective. The walk-in souls may also come to visit you to check in to see how you are. They don't always come with an extreme experience like an out-of-body or near-death moment. They check on you to make sure that you're okay and to see where you are and if they need to step in or to help you along the way. Just trust in yourselves and trust in each other. Keep doing the work and know that more will be coming. All right, guys, we are at the last minute before this goes out. Okay, so like I said, I tried to record twice before I got to do the final recording. So I took the two that I did and added it to the end of that one. So that if anyone wants to hear those other two 20-minute recordings, you can. In your name, namaste. Very often... I did test it a couple of times, <clears throat> more than one, I just saw 27, so hopefully they're like, yeah, you're good, okay? 
we are going to be talking about Pleiadian lineup. Pleiadian lineup is happening right now, and it happens every year, twice a year. And it is a time where basically, like, the alignment and the energy is just more direct to connect with the Pleiadian frequencies and energies, the beings, the information. Um, I've noticed myself in my own life, lots of synchronicity surrounding it, you know. Um, and again, when, when, when people come, star seeds, shamans, light workers, healers, empaths, those who are awakening or woke, and they will ask questions about who they are or where they've come from or their past lives or all of those things. It's like, it's just kind of like goes along with it all. Basically, I believe you will set yourself up to have certain dynamics or markers or energies and elements and things within your experience here as a human that are going to let you know or give you the confirmation about other places and things that you've done or to kind of be like a like a marker of like hey you're on the right path here you know like um sometimes you're going to see the number synchronicities where you like like I see 27 non-stop every day all the time but I also see like seven 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 four 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 two 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 or then I'll see like the the mirrored ones where it's like two one two three one four three you know all of those things. Sometimes they will repeat one a lot. It's like I'll have like a week where it's like all sevens, seven 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 one seven seven oh seven seventy seven seven you know whatever, um, and then. It's like it will shift and it will start doing it in another way with like the twos or the fives or the whatever. When that's happening, I feel like those are like messages coming in from above or from our I am presence or the consciousness or whatever. And it's coded within the energy and the frequency of the numbers and the patterns. And you may not understand it in that moment, but maybe later you'll dissect it or it'll come out in some profound words that you say to somebody and you're like, I don't even know how I pulled that out of me, but whatever. And it's usually something like that was downloaded or already installed when you were here. But when we get beyond the numbers, we may have other things show up in our reality. So just like the numbers repeat and do over and over and over, you may have that happen with an animal. It's 333 on the clock as I say that. You may have an, an animal that starts showing up. Again, this is another thing that's going to happen on various ways and, and within your life at different times, you may find it shifts. Supposedly, <clears throat> we all have like our main animal peeps, okay? Depending upon what religion or what background spirituality that you follow will probably dictate like what you, you know, resonate within all of that. Within the shamanism, they say that you have, you know, your spirit animals that are with you all the time throughout your entire life. And then throughout your life, there may be times and tests or, you know, just periods where you might need a specific animal to assist you through something. Or there may be a specific animal showing up to help you through something. And when that happens, you just, you know, want to acknowledge it, maybe get the message connected to it, Google what's the meaning of this animal, or meditate what's the meaning of this animal, what, what message does this animal want to give to me. Um, and then, um, in shamanism as well, that's something I'm actually going to be doing soon. Um, I still have to finish Alcyon Light Healing, which I feel like this last part of it is just kind of going to like trickle out here and there the majority the like of it is out there we've got six levels like a lot of videos but um shaman shamaness 101 is something that's been coming into my brain for a while and when I do that I'm going to help people to kind of set themselves up to be doing the work themselves how to get their understanding of what are my animals what is this what is that where's you know and, and all the basics okay that should be coming out not 
in the too far future and it um will be on the divine essentials youtube channel like in a playlist just like you know monet key rights are star rights are and um play uh, alcyon light healing is okay so you have the animals you have the numbers you have your birth day okay the day that you were born is aligned with energy and frequency through the planets that were there and where they were at that time and i think a lot of people will look at astrology and whether or not they really resonate with their sun sign and the information surrounding that can kind of almost deter them away from astrology or bring them further in but that's just like the tip of the iceberg you know i was born in may during the lineup and i was born may 18th so i'm a taurus so those markers those indicators were significant for me those were like jumping points for me because i'm like all right like i start getting weird information about star seeds and this is 11 years ago so there's not a whole lot of like info out there you know you google it and there's like just massive amounts of it people regurgitating what they've already seen somewhere else but back then it wasn't like like that the fact that i even stumbled into it upon it where i was not even at all a person into spirituality or whatever i never stepped foot in a church i never had any type of belief system the guy that i lived with was definitely not into any of it never really had any of that stuff going on and he would use the computers for ebay or um you know buying and selling vehicles so neither one of us were ever like researching anything of spiritual concepts and um anything like that I really very rarely even used the things, you know. But for some reason, that information found me and everything connected to it or everything that I was guided or felt pulled or compelled to do would just give me more further synchronicity and confirmation and diving deeper into holy moly, what the hell is this? Why is this happening to me craziness? But one of the final things after months of this going on was the Palladian lineup and the reasons were just kind of you know significant to me and I'm sure everybody's probably heard me say it by now my mom would tell me you would do on the 17th born on the 18th a minute away from the 19th so that always stuck in my mind 17 18 19 okay when I found the thing about the Palladian lineup and the starseed markings which is what Lavendar channeled about this and it connects to the degrees so when you go to the natal chart you have the planets you have the 12 houses you have the 12 zodiac signs and then you have all of the uh, degrees okay it's like a 360 degree wheel or whatever i'm not i'm not an expert at it i don't know all the ins and outs of it but i know that you can have taurus as your sun sign and that sun could be at 25 26 27 degrees on the chart or it could be at one degree or whatever okay i don't think they go beyond a certain degree number i don't know the exact thing for that and and i don't know all of the the numbers and the codings and the things because it's it's pretty intricate and, and vast but i do know that if you were born during november lineup or may lineup which is again the 15th to the 20th sometimes it ranges from there like up a couple of days down a couple of days but it's it's pretty much in there when i found out the info on her website she was saying the 15th to the 20th and she had you know wrote down she had a black background all white text but 17 and 18 and 19 for may was in red as in this is the height this is the biggest point of it this is the crazy like boop 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 and everything that she was talking about about it i was like holy shit because it was like kind of like the stuff that i still experience now where it's like i'll have like a full-on week of insanity and i'm like am I, i'm going crazy like i'm gonna be locked up they're gonna put me away like i'm nuts but then I, i'm not nuts because i can record it and show it to you and other people are like yep that's definitely fucked up and weird or like my magnetic freaking house <laughs> that was going on during eclipse time 
you know, it's just weird stuff happens to those of us who are here um, with these these spiritual missions or an alignment to these star energies. And again, you code yourself. You put it in there. You are your your way of figuring out where you come from and all of that. And I think at one point too, you will have an acceptance of like, okay, obviously there's something here bigger than me, bigger than what I can comprehend with my human brain and the conditioning and understanding that they allow us to like go through or want us to be within. Plus we're limited by being here in the density of the third dimension. But as we go through this stuff and we learn this stuff and we awaken and we understand the simple concepts, but then we break through to the more, you know, expanded ones and the higher frequency ones, I feel we start to realize things, put together other things, and then transcend those things and realize like they're insignificant anyways, but they were necessary and needed for me to get to where I am, you know, and it's basically a journey of within, you've got to go within and you've got to look at you and who you are why why you do what you do and all of those things and in being self-aware having awareness paying attention to you and what you're doing and how you're acting and how you're behaving and like where is it coming from and why it might be there and what the indicators of different things are is the best thing you can possibly do to heal and grow and become a better you and then through learning all of that stuff and studying and, and exploring it, meditating and, you know, getting the outward and inward type of information to come together, you figure out who you are. That makes it a hell of a lot easier to figure out, like, what you want to do or where you want to be or who you want to spend your time with um, and what you should be doing or not be doing and, you know, things like that. And then you can kind of um, expand from there. But the Pleiadian lineup, they say, is a time where the Pleiades is aligned with us. So it's like a closer direct line, okay? Um, like, say we're in antenna, and which is what star seeds basically are. We're all antennas down here. We're bringing in frequencies and energies. We're bringing in consciousness. That's why many of us channel. That's why many of us are compelled to speak or to sing or to do light language or to channel with our bowls or to channel with our cards or to channel with the writing or to do something, to create something, to make something. And a lot of times we receive something too. And, it, and it's not in the ways that, you know, most of the people around here are receiving things. Like they get an email, we get ringing in the air. And that ringing is a download of information and wisdom and, and you know, raising the frequencies and all of that. Um, and then we take that and we turn that into something. Like for me, I think that's why I have so many different things that I do and explore and create and share because there's so many frequencies and energies and information that has been coming in for so long. So one set, you know, that we in your ear, I may come up with a, a new channeled blend that I'm going to make with aromatherapy. And then the next time I have something come in like buzzing or, you know, something going on top of my head or could be, you know, through the messages, through the animals, I keep seeing the same animals, or maybe, like, I'll have a week where I see a ton of animals, and so the following week, I start doing, you know, um, maybe a deck that correlates to that, and channeled all the information through the imagery, how I put the images together, what words go together with the images, you know, creating and making something from that frequency and energy, and turning it into a tool or an item with a high vibration that others can benefit from, receive from, and and share that, that energy with. When I do it with the crystals, again, it's like crystals, when they came in, I think they just like turned everything up and made it almost, I it, it almost kind of like got to be too much <laughs> because they're so powerful and each one of them has their own little, you know, consciousness and then they have beings connected to them and energies of their you know highs and lows and grounding and rising and 
protecting and healing and receiving and blah, 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 all the things. But, you know, I think ha- I had so many in here with me for a while. I think that really messed with sleeping as well because um, they say, like, and I, I didn't know, but they were like, yeah, you probably shouldn't have these in your bedroom because it's going to make it difficult to sleep or you um, may start to see more things or feel more things because they have more things connected to them. They're ancient beings that have been here long before, you know, us. And they hold all of the information from wherever they've originated from. The Lemurian ones are like connected to the Lemurians and the wisdom from there and the energy from there. So, you know, I don't have just one Lemurian wand. I have like fucking 30 of them here. And they're like all pointing at me. And I'm like, why can't I sleep? Why am I seeing all this stuff? What is going on? (laughs) Duh, Bridget. You know, but we live and we learn and we figure it out as we go. But with those, like... I didn't even, I didn't know, it was, I thought I was just going to grab like a couple of little boop boops and like put them up on my Etsy and that was it, but that turned into a whole mass of craziness that, you know, eventually I had to just like step back from. I do plan to um, share them again and get them onto my uh, available places so people can purchase them and, you know, do my other aspects with it, but I'm no longer going to be like, oh, you bought a $2 crystal? Okay, here's a postcard with the messages that I've pulled for you and channeled in, and uh, ba 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 and here's a card that's like telling you about the activation that I did on it, and one that tells you about what the thing is, and all of the energies about it. For $2, man, no, you don't, no, I can't do that. That's part of the reason why I crash so hard, is because I was doing way too much, but it's because I receive so much. And also, when we give, we do receive, but we have to be mindful of what we are giving and are we being in a balance with everybody because everybody can benefit from what you're giving, but if you're not receiving enough in return, you're going to crash, you're going to burn, you're going to get hurt. So I now am going to, I'm going to either, I'm probably going to make a new listing or a new concept or just add an an add-on to when I post maybe like a batch of five quartz crystals there'll be a b c d e and if people want to act uh add on an activation or add on something specific that'll be an option but you know they want the two dollar crystal that's that's not going to come with all those other things so eliminate some of that stuff and then it makes it so that i do have the energy to continue to post them and put them out there because i'm receiving in an equal flow so Anyways, getting far over there, but back here again. When you come in, you came in on a certain day. You came in with a certain degree of your sun, of your moon, of your Venus, of your Mars, of Saturn, and all of the planets. And that impacts how you are as a human. So your sun, moon, and rising are the big three. Those are the big influencing things over you. But they can also be connected with star energies. You know, Alcyon is the great central sun. Alcyon is the brightest star within the seven main sister stars of the Pleiades. The seven sisters are the seven daughters of um, Atlas within the old mythology. But when you look them up, <clears throat> you can find, oh, wow, like, okay, there's this one and that one and do 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 and ba ba ba. And there's like Maya and um, Taigeta and, you know, they all have their names and things like that. But Sirius is another star system with other, you know, energies and frequencies. There's actually Sirius A and Sirius B. We didn't know that, but the Dogon tribe in Africa knew that a long, long time ago. They actually put the elliptical orbit that looks like DNA in their rock wall paintings. And they told people that went there, like, you know, we went there and we were like, hey, what's this? What's that? Ba 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 And they were like, oh, yeah, the series. And um, that series is, the, the, you know, the two dual stars. And then when the people asked them where they get that information from, because we didn't get it until many, many, many years later when we had, you know, our telescopes coming to be. And they said the fish people told them. And they were like, the fish people were kind of um, humanish, you know, like they had a, they had that element to them a little bit, not not completely, but a little bit. 
I can't remember, um, can't think of the names of them for some reason. There's the fish people, which are like a certain name that goes with it, but I feel like it could have been dolphins because the dolphins are connected to Sirius and the Syrians and that consciousness. And there is a galactic ocean. And what's interesting, the other day I was seeing um, something about the uh, Devil's Hole or something like that. It's one of those places that you're not supposed to go within to do diving. But, you know, people have. And people have gone in there and died and gotten lost and whatever. But wherever this place is, I think I think it's in the United States, in like Colorado or something. It's weird. But it goes down really, really deep. And then there's a hole down at the bottom of it that's like um, not that big. But it does have like a current that pulls into it, almost like a drain. If you pulled the tub drain, you know, slowly, slowly taking water down into it. Um, but... The people said that it connects to an underground ocean. Like an, yeah, like, like we have another fucking ocean. We have the ocean that we all know about, but then there's an underground one. And I'm like, wait, what? And that underground ocean in the United States connects to 2,000 miles away in another area on the world. And when something goes on in that other area of the world, it causes a tsunami in this area of the world. And it's like, wait, what? So the fact that that's a thing actually was like wow because there's a lot of things that I've done intuitively or just didn't really think much about it when I was doing it you know um before I did shamanic work I would take people down I would open the vortex and sometimes I would go up to connect and you know do our spiritual journeys on a meditation that I was guiding but other times I would take them down into the caverns into the earth and when we would go down there I would bring them to the caverns of water and go into the water and there would always be like a portal or a dolphin or somebody there that would take us to the galactic oceans that that are connected here and everywhere so you can go down into the earth into the caverns into the water and from there transport through that galactic ocean or the cosmic ocean into the waters of Sirius and that's where you'll find yourself is in Sears. And that's why, like, the dolphins of Sears, the dolphins of Earth, feel like they're basically the same thing. Um, and they, you know, there's so many things untouched and unknown about the ocean. People talk about going into space and they talk about, you know, all these, these things and these concepts. But water is what we are created out of with our physical bodies. You know, 90% of us is water. And we know how vibration and frequency impacts water and changes molecular structure. If you put, you know, the word I love you on a cup full of water, you do the same thing to another cup of water, but you say I hate you, those two things are going to have a different frequency. And when you freeze the water drops, one is going to look beautiful like a snowflake and one is going to look polluted and disgusting like it's been, you know, tainted based off of those words alone. They could do that with, like, rice as well, and the rice gets all moldy and gross really quickly. The, the, the other one that's, like, full of love or gratitude or whatever stays fresh longer. Um, so, again, the same thing with us. Whatever you fill us up with or what we hear about ourselves from others or what we believe about ourselves or say to ourselves or think about ourselves is how we're going to reflect it out. So if you don't feel good, if you're not shiny, if you, you know, snowflake stuff is a little messed up, be mindful of the thoughts and the things like that but anyways <laughs> i'm like i'm totally going off over here way bye 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 starseed shaman podcast and we are in the pleiadian lineup energies right now so i was going to talk about that with you all I do have a microphone on today that i'm hoping is going to be okay um Lately, with all these energies, the eclipse, the 11-11 portal, uh, blood moons and full moons and ups and downs and ins and outs and craziness, I've noticed that I'm like tapped into a higher frequency, receiving a lot more downloads, seeing a lot more, feeling a lot more, hearing a lot more, knowing a lot more. Um, however, technology has not been uh, feeling, feeling it the best you know it's like blah, blah, blah. but it has seems to has seemed to kind of like get back to normal a little bit 
but there's definitely still been some weird shit going on as a whole with internet phones i've got three phones <laughs> i've got the phone that i just got then i got the phone that i had that was mine um and then i have the phone that was my mother's and uh yeah it's it's a lot and then i got my laptop so you know I, i've got plenty of devices and ways to use you know these things but not always do they want to be functional and helping me to be doing what i want to do but anyways Pleiadian lineup is here and it is something that happens every year twice a year may and november we have the Pleiadian lineup it's one of those significant things for me that was like whoa wow okay i can't deny this anymore and I do believe that those of you um, who resonate as being a starseed or a light worker or, you know, uh, Blu-ray, Indigo, whatever it is that you kind of identify with, or those of you who feel a pull to even figure that out or wondering about where am I from, where have I been, ba 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 ba, I do believe that the star seeds come in with like markers or we come in with things that we use to be like little indicators of hey pay attention to this or this is your confirmation on that or this is significant for you because it's part of your frequency and soul so everybody's obviously going to be specifically aligned to their own things their own ways of figuring them out so some of you may not even do any of it you know the way that I've done it depending on where you're from and how you follow your blueprint okay so i feel like everybody has a soul blueprint everybody has um almost like a it's like a hey this is like what i'm going to choose to use for this re this creation or this existence so that i can do the things that i need to do and i'm going to be interacting with these people at these times and you know for the most part we have free will and everything down here is kind of like ah crazy chaos but it's really not at the same time and we who would know us better than us right so it's like you're going to be sending yourself into some place where you're going to have like amnesia but you know how you are and you know what's going to like fire you up or whatever you know you're going to you're going to figure all that out and plan it all out the best way that you possibly can and then there's others of us who may come in under those same understandings and concepts of like, you're going to have amnesia, you're not going to remember, ba 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 things are going to be specific and significant for you, but you are going to be the type of person that's not going to be doing this, so you're going to need the type of person that does do that to help you to get to the same end result that this person got to on their own, because they are the type of the person that would do that type of thing to figure those pieces out. You know what I mean? So basically what I'm saying is like, someone like me, when my buzz through my head went on and then uh, weird information was just like blah, 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 into my brain coming out of me like sporadically, I would be like, blah, 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 blah. And then the TV would, you know, my mom, my mom's flicking channels and the TV will recite every freaking thing I just said word for word back. I was like, oh, what? You know, you'd be compelled to go research that a little bit. Like, what the hell's going on with me? Am I crazy? Am I, uh, what is this? And where I was at that time in my life, I wasn't spiritual. I wasn't around anybody who was. The guy that I was romantically involved with had no, no spiritual, religious type of things going on around him. Um, he would use the internet to do like eBay and buying and selling of cars. And I rarely didn't use it that much. If I did, it was usually because somebody like told me to go look at something. Um, and then once this happened, I was like, wow, okay, uh, what the heck? And once this happened, it was crazy because, like, you know, I know we're much more evolved now with, like, our algorithms and the ways that things work. But back then, like, you know, I, I, I was like, what is going on? This is crazy. I remember the, the night that I'm, I had that experience was pretty close to the night that, or the day that the buzz went through my head. When I was looking out the window and I was like, blah, 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 talking about meteors and what I thought they were and about stars and blah, 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 gas and air. And I don't even know what I was saying, but it was saying a lot. And when I finished up saying what I was saying, 
my mom flicked onto the uh, Discovery Channel, and that recited everything I had just said back to us, and I was like, what? So I remember sitting there with her next to me and opening up the laptop, typing something in, but I didn't use spiritual whatever, like, because back then, around that time, my first indication was like, okay, I'm nuts, I have schizophrenia, something's wrong, like on a, on a, you know, mental level, so I don't remember exactly what I researched or how or whatever, but I do remember what came up very clearly, um, and I wasn't even, like, I was doing something else and it was like a recommended thing that popped up over on the side of the screen. And I was like, all right, what is that? So I clicked on it. It was like 12 signs of spiritual awakening. It had a big green head on it, like a, like a green head with like smoke coming out of the ears. And it was 12 signs of spiritual awakening. And I sat there with my mom and it was back then when it, that's how all the videos were. It was like, you know, words come up some background music and you got to read the whole thing to yourself because nobody's reading it to you this is just like <laughs> one and the words are either way too slow or way too fast it was never just like an easy process but um i read it and every single one that came up of those 12 signs was like oh my god oh oh my god oh oh my god and that's what sparked me going into my pretty long time of researching and studying and figuring out and putting pieces together and the Palladian stuff started coming to me and was like hey Baba, you're starseed hey th these are the signs of a starseed hey you're a Pleiadian starseed ba -ba 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 -ba. and I didn't want to take that as on like I, I was like no nah, no no that's too weird that's too crazy that's nope 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 and I didn't want to believe it but I felt it you know and I'm like oh my god so I kept looking deeper and deeper and deeper and no matter how I looked and no matter which way I would word things or typing something in it was always bringing out more information or more indicators or more synchronicity and more confirmation that yep this is what it is and you know you might as well just stop sitting here doing this because you know, you're you're just pull, pulling up more reasons for you to believe this rather than to debunk it. But playing in lineup, when I stumbled upon that information, I probably because I would do this thing for after a while of like you know figuring stuff out, and researching and and learning and um, and it would go in like cycles. Like sometimes I would be learning about ancient Egypt and all of the stuff back back then and the pharaohs and the ba -ba -ba and Ramses and blah, 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 and you know and I would sit and I would have like some some documentaries you know some real world stuff and and then um maybe I'd go and you know dive into Atlantis for a while and look up all the stuff of that and Plato and da -ba 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 and da -ba -ba -ba, and all the different people who have searched for it and found it or think they found it in Bimini Island and Bimini Road and, blah, 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 blah. and then I would go do you know um like the Roman gods or the Greek gods and the mythologies and blah, 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 blah. Um, and it was just, you know, massive, massive amounts of, of looking into all the things and um, suppressed archaeology and artifacts that they don't want you to know about. Because that thing is, if, if you're somebody that went and paid school the thousands and thousands of dollars to become, you know, one of these people who's digging up artifacts, and when you find something that, you know, didn't just goes and blows out of the water what we believe to be the truth, we was like, hey, look at there's a human foot right here, with a fucking dinosaur imprint. That's kind of wow. And and it they're right at the same time, guys. Like they were like walking their dinosaur. You have the choice as that person to either throw out your career because they're going to do that. They're going to destroy your career. Um, or you can sit on that and, and, you know, not carbon date it or not present it, and not put it out there because the people who put them out there and tell everybody about what's going on get ridiculed and laughed at. The um, Zechariah Stitchin decoded all of these cylinder seals that he found in uh, Mesopotamia or somewhere. I can't remember exactly the, the indicate uh, what, but it was about Enki and Enlil. He talked about the 12th planet. Nibiru, which is in our you know, solar system and all of that. But, you know, the guy spent a lot of time trying to figure out what these things said because they were in a 
um, type of writing that's not like letters. It's it's like you know cuneiform, I believe is the word what they call it, and not a lot of people know how to decipher cuneiform. However, he did spend a lot of time doing that, but then he got like ridiculed and mocked, and you know mainstream didn't want to touch it, but he was smart enough to you know put it out there anyways because you know the invention of the internet helped us to be able to do that even if you know the news doesn't want to report it you know mainstream people don't want you to see it or they try to push people to go away from it or to laugh at it or to dismiss it there's still people out there who will who will understand wait wait this guy went to college this guy spent all that time learning this shit this guy spent all that time with those things why would he just pull out of his butt some story that pretty much aligns and makes more sense than what we've, you know, come to think or believe about about stuff if we just go off by the Bible. And who made the Bible? Men, you know? And, and anybody, anywhere can say whatever they want to say at any time, you know? And, and so we run into that risk with all of these documents and cylinder seals and um, cuneiform or hieroglyphics or whatever. It's It's all... Basically, unless you were there, specifically saw it with your own eyes, experienced the history yourself, you were there in it, in that moment, you remember it, know it. We, we can't know for sure anything with anybody at any time and, any, and anywhere. And even just going country to country, you're going to get a different history um, from each of those places because everybody wants to reflect themselves as being a little bit better than where they maybe have been. You know, like here in the United States, like, oh yeah, Christopher Columbus, he came over and he discovered America but when he discovered America he found a native America no 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 that doesn't make any sense but hey because everybody is taught that to think that to go along with it we make it a fucking special little you know day with turkey not a lot of people question it or they they just accept it and go with it but hey how do you discover a place that somebody's already there you don't discover it you you visit it or you ask if you can stay but that's not what they did, you know. Um, they decided to, you know, make it look a certain way. But they definitely weren't being that certain way. And um, they destroyed a lot of stuff because they brought, you know, foreign diseases and um, just rudeness and, and, and greed and, and stuff that basically wiped out a lot of those people. And some of them they just killed anyways because they were, you know, taking over their land. But that's going to be the case wherever you go, okay? So when it comes down to history, galactic or otherwise, there's never going to be the source that you can trust for all of the information. However, you have your own source. You have your own inner information. You have your own thing within you to decode and to figure out and to resonate with and to kind of depict the story of you or who you are, or where you've come from, and why you're here, and what you're supposed to be doing while you're here, and the people that you're connecting with while you're here, and why certain people have this habit, and blah, 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 and all of that stuff, it is encoded within you, and for the most part, it's like, I feel kind of like it's an evolution, and it's, and it's a thing that's going to evolve and, it, and it's going to be specific for everybody, and it's just like going into the store, you say you go to like the, uh, Best Buy, and Best Buy has all these different laptops, and has all these different fucking cell phones, and all these different providers, and all these different upgrades, and all these different things that you can add on, or, you know, do for, and so you have your system, and you're going to have upgrades over the time that you're here, and you're going to need protection over the time that you're here, and sometimes, you know, there's going to be a system reboot, and sometimes there's going to be, like, a system fail, and there's going to be times when people come in, and they fuck you up, and they steal that information, you forget it, it's gone, that memory card got, like, you know, (coughs) not good, it got messed up, It's, it's now blank, that's, like, trauma, okay, so, like, sometimes we go through shit, 
and we disassociate from it or we can't remember it that specific day or the details surrounding it as much because it was traumatic and it overloaded the system and so we shut down but what that is on a spiritual level is like soul loss people say in the shamanic teachings that you lost a fragment of your soul and so we need to go travel through the different realms or the different upper world lower world middle worlds to retrieve these things and understand these things but you can also travel these worlds or travel through your consciousness travel through space and time which is an illusion and everything exists now in this moment and everything is coexisting in this moment so you don't have to go too far to get it you know you just need to trust and believe and allow yourself to receive the information the details and all of that that correlates to where you are who you are why you are and all of that so I recommend for people, especially now with the energies that we have with the Palladian lineup and all of that, uh, which is amplified every year by the 1111 portal, you know, and 1111 portal is a time of manifestation, it's a time of awakening, a lot of people wake up with the 1111 as like the, the, the thing, you know, it's like they start seeing 1111, they start seeing 111, and that's the awakener, it's the pay attention, it's the hey, hey, I'm trying to get your attention, look at this, there's more than meets the eye. So most people wake up to that. The numbers themselves hold frequencies and energies that are going to assist you on your path. You might see 777, 717, 707, 17, 71, you know, all of that for like a whole week. And then the next week you might start seeing like 313, 333, 333, all the threes, okay? Those have their own energies and frequencies. You can see a combination of them throughout the week. You can see a combination of them throughout the hour. Those are bringing in en energy, frequencies, information, downloads, and codings. You don't know it consciously when it comes in. You're not going to be like, oh, yeah, that, that 777, that was a, you know, you're not going to know it off the bat. But if you meditate, you go within, or even just have a conversation with a person, and maybe they need advice or, you know, something is said from you that you're like, wow, that was really profound, or it doesn't really... I don't know where I pulled that out of or why why that came to me. It's usually because of things like those numbers or those codings or like the ringing in your ear is a receiving, you know? They're talking to you, but they're talking to you in frequency and energy. They're talking to you in a higher level that you don't know at the moment, but it will come when it's ready or it needs to. Like when we go through these light transmissions or the light codes or the uh, energies of people doing light language, those again it, that you feel it it's not like an actual thing that people have like you know oh means this it's is a frequency it's an energy it's coming through to give you something you can do it yourself too like sometimes you may be compelled to sing you may be compelled to hum humming frequency sound is very very powerful within all of the creation and with all of the things that we are a part of we are basically frequency energy consciousness water um, vibrating very you know very varied between each human and each individual experiences that we have and uh, throughout our lives what we endure or who we allow into our space what we allow into our space what thoughts we're thinking what words we're saying all of it is very important you know people don't realize and when we think about like the basic concept of like a spell okay somebody did a spell basically a spell is like the written or spoken word okay anytime you say i am you are creating a spell for yourself but unfortunately many people are like i am so dumb or stupid or i am ugly or i'm blah 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 whatever you're saying at the end of those i am i'm tired I am, blah, blah, blah. you're gonna re you're gonna see that you're gonna feel it you're gonna know it you're gonna live it so become mindful of what you say after that oh, I am like if you are tired you can say I I am uh, in need of rest you know but but like but also be like I am resting I am recuperating I am healing I am healed I am invigorated I am energized you know don't feed yourself the energy or the information that you don't want to be or own these things that you don't want to be um, like bipolar, right? Like like a lot of people are diagnosed uh, stuff wrong 
first of all. A lot of people get diagnosed with things that they don't have. And a lot of people diagnose themselves with things that they don't have. And a lot of people will hear the possibility of having a diagnosis and then manifest the diagnosis of it because they believe it or because they create it by speaking about, I am this, and blah, blah, blah. If you keep saying, like, I am sick, or I am, you know, bipolar, or I am blah, 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 whatever it is, whatever that means to you in your mind and how that looks and feels and all of that, you're going you're gonna to add to the energy of having that be in your reality. And we do it so quickly, especially now that time has gone by and things are accelerating, energies are increasing, people are becoming more aware, we're waking up more and more every day. You've got to be mindful about what you're saying and about what you're thinking and about who you're allowing near you and what they think about you and what, you know, all of that stuff does on a grand scale. The words that you write down, the, the words that you recite, the words that you read, the words that you hear, the songs that you listen to, the frequency of the songs, the frequency of, you know, everything is important. So I know we can't go like live in a bubble and protect ourselves from everything. You don't have to, but you do want to be very, very like aware of all of these things because they're going to dictate how your life is. If you're sitting around like listening to like rap music where they're talking about bitches and you know, bombs and burning and killing and blah, 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 whatever they talk about in those, you know, don't be surprised if you start acting like bitches and hoes and doing some weird shit and, you know, or thinking certain ways about money or having a certain belief system set into you about like, you know, girls who say that girls who look like that equal this or, oh, she look at what she's wearing. She must be a blah, blah, blah. Or with guys like, oh, he's a boo 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 boo, he's a player, he's a hater, he's a ba 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 ba. It's almost like everything is like the whole society has been kind of like pushed into becoming less of these people who, when I was growing up, it was like you know commitment was was a thing, and you know staying with people was a thing, love was a thing, uh, making it with a relationship was like you know we're gonna put effort into it we're not gonna just like bounce around or play games or ghost and all of that shit which is funny because back you know back when when ghosting you would think back then it would be easier to ghost because we didn't have all these like technologies and uh social medias and all these like ways that people are expected to just instantly respond and know and blah 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 and they can look at you and see that you're there you know did you post on your wall or did you post on your story or did blah, 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 blah. like back then when i was growing up we didn't have any of that stuff so if you wanted to ghost somebody you just go you just hide your bike in the backyard and they're ghosted but we didn't do that back then we just like you know drifted apart or whatever but in this day and age you could have a whole freaking relationship going with somebody like you know really for months and then they just bounce on you and you don't know why or what happened and you know but you see they're still out there living their life they're not gone they didn't die they're just like ignoring you (laughs) and it's like what the hell that's backwards but I feel like a lot of it comes from the things that are subconsciously being programmed into us and the things that we are hearing and the things that we're receiving subconsciously through the music and through the the ways that people are and like everybody watching these shows like uh keeping up with the kardashians and you know making people shallow making people care about stupid things like their asses being as enormous asses and um you know like like this is goals for people like i want to have a camera crew follow me around because i have a big butt you know like it's not it's not a good good thing that we've got going on there on the flip side of that, there is other good things that are coming about from our technology and our stronger connections to humans everywhere across the globe. And that is, you know, f- understanding and learning and finding things out that we probably never would have otherwise. We have more and more information available to every moment of every day. But we have to be aware of it. And the biggest thing that I can tell you that can help you on your path and your purpose and your mission and your life and growing and evolving and and just being a good, you know, happy whole human is self-awareness. Even if you, you know, for some reason are afraid to go within and figure it out who you really are at your core, 
becoming self-aware is like the biggest power that you can have it's a superpower because when you figure out oh shit i'm my own worst enemy or, oh wow like this is why this happens to me or this is why i can't get things to work with that particular situation or that person or this circumstance you get the answers to the to these big longing things in your brain of like wow all right it's because i have trauma oh it was because of the way i was you know brought up from ba ba it's not that you're broken or that you know there's something terribly wrong with anybody on the planet some people there may be but for the most part anything that we figure out anything that we discover anything that we go within and, and uncover can be then learned to you know cultivate into a new way or to shape it with a new belief or to overcome or to um break the mold or to you know get out of the ancestral line of we're going to keep doing this shitty show and then you know transcend it 